Hello there ladies and gentlemen. Today what I want to talk about is several changes that will make the combined arms update. Actually combine our arms. Because what we've got currently is a whole bunch of balance changes which yes alters the dynamic between vehicles and infantry and vehicles and aircraft and aircraft and infantry and everything else but doesn't actually encourage them to play together any more than we had before with the small exception of vehicle capture points. But unfortunately that appears to be about it. Now in this video I'm not going to even talk about balance in the slightest because, well that's not what it's about honestly and I'll leave people that better understand the, uh, the balance and damage amounts and projectile velocities and all that wonderful, wonderful things. I'll leave them to their own devices. But in this video I'm just going to be talking about ways to actually combine arms. So first up on my big list is vehicle hacking. Now we've all seen it teased, teased at us in the times gone by and of course we had it back in the original game but it's never quite come to fruition here in Planet Side 2. Now, in Planet Side 2 there is this clear divide between the vehicle fight outdoors and the indoor fight of infantry, but less so than in the original game. And we did see lots of vehicles getting stolen out from um, behind the backs of people that were pushing into bases, and it was, it was pretty handy. It was really interesting, it meant that people had to deconstruct their vehicles when they got out of them for fear of losing it and having it turned against them. But we just don't get it in Planet Side 2, despite the fact we've seen that it appears to be able to be done. I mean, I don't know how much extra work would need to be put into it, but from what we were teased, it does appear that they were almost there. Maybe, I'm not sure, but it would be so good, and that would mean that infantry can interact with vehicles in a different way. It would also, of course, give infiltrators, presuming that they were the only class to be able to do it, something to actually do with vehicles, because right now, they can't really do shit, apart from sniping a repairing engineer. And that's it. All right, powering through this list. Next up, we've got the anvil option. Now, the anvil uh, system, for those of you who didn't see it on the PTS, was a way of calling down a flash to allow you to get some quick transport out in the field. You just did some clicking on your map screen, and well, down one came. And you could only do it on a service so often, and there was a cool down of a minute or so. But it was quite handy. It allowed you, if you were stuck out in the wilderness, to get back to base quickly. Not that there's very much wilderness in this game, because you can walk everywhere in about 3 30 seconds. But anyway, let's carry on. Now, rather than it just being for flashes, which is um, fine, but it could be so much more than that. What I suggest we do is you let squad leaders also call down a stock sundra, so very basic, no certs into it whatsoever, literally stock guns, everything, or alternatively, uh, a Valkyrie instead. And what that would mean is that squad leaders can instantly re-engage with a fight that's been uh, pushed back, where the sundras have been knocked out, a squad leader could call in a sundra, get that thing deployed, and allow the fight to keep on raging, and that would allow fights to progress across the open field, allowing infantry and vehicles more of a chance to interact together. Um, with the Valkyrie it would also mean that uh, squad leaders can get into their groups into the air faster and you can put all kinds of limits and caveats on this. You can put a time-based thing on there, you could cap it with resources, you could even introduce a new system of command points, but I'm not going to touch command too much in this little video today. But overall I think it would massively improve the quality of fight because you'd have Sundras staggering backwards as uh, the front lines moved, or forwards of course, and yeah, it would just mean that fights are more sustainable, more attacks would succeed, you'd get more map, map flow, it, it's it's win-win, okay? Anyway, moving on. Right, next up I'm going to talk about the Infiltrator, and the Infiltrator's got its lovely EMPs which have every single function under the entire sun, so many that some have had to be removed recently. But what you could do is, alternatively to removing features which are interesting, what you could do is you could split that grenade up into two. And on one side you could have a disruption grenade, as I'm going to call it, and on one side the EMP. And one's going to basically do more vehicle uh, kind of problems, and the other one's going to affect infantry more and perhaps deployables. But you could split the deployables between the two. And again this would give the infantry for something else that they can do to deal with vehicles. Now in the original game, infiltrators could chuck an EMP at a vehicle and what they would do is they'd disable the weapons and they'd also slow it down. Um, I can't remember actually what would happen if an EMP grenade hit an aircraft. I like to imagine that it fell out of the sky, but honestly it's been so long since i played Planet So One that I can't remember. But either way, it gave infiltrators another way to interact with vehicles. And as it doesn't necessarily like injure the vehicle, unless it's an aircraft of course, but if you get hit with a grenade but as in, when you're an aircraft, you suck. Anyway. Um, it does mean that the vehicle still got a chance to get away, and what I would probably suggest is you just knock out the uh, the guns and allow the vehicle to then disengage from combat and run away, um, rather than slow it down. Although that's a possibility as well. 
Next up, we've got everyone's, not my favourite at the very least, one of my first designs, which was for rumble seats on MVTs and possibly lightnings. Now, this would be a nice way of uh, applying some ablative armour, as I'm going to imagine it's called. I know nothing about the military, so I'm just going to pick that, pick that name out of the air, to your tank, so that you can absorb extra tank rounds, and uh, or any of the rounds, because those squishy infantry would absorb them for you nicely. But it would also mean, of course, that infantry can hitch a ride on tanks as they push up to the front line, and you could also carry around some of your buddies on there, perhaps even get them repairing, obviously you could limit it to one repairing at a time, and limit the repairing rate to um, avoid any sticky situations, but on the whole it would allow you to combine your arms, so it's on the mind list. Right, another one is something which I really think could alter the, the meta, for lack of a better word, strategic game, whatever the hell you want to call it. But basically, we've, we need to gamify the space in between bases, because right now it's just not played over properly. You get people just bouncing around, sneaking from one place to the next, and getting the hack on, and then the whole fight focuses on the distance between the spawn room and the cap point, and then the cap point to the sundra. And everything else, there's no, it may as well not be there half the time. Now, if you put in systems, now it could be an LLU, so capture the flag and or payload system, or you could put like a, a mini lattice, as I've suggested before a couple of times, between the bases. That would allow you to make things more granular. It would allow you to push between the uh, between the big facility cap points and outpost cap points. Now, I know uh, um, Serious Gaming, he's on his channel and his uh, Alter in the Meta series, has talked about a micro lattice, oh, sorry, a, a, a hex lattice hybrid, and I think that would work very well. Um, but personally, I'd like to simplify it to just a micro lattice and leave it at that. It keeps the way things the way they are. We don't need to then start getting confused about the hex system, but either would work and would achieve essentially the same objective of gamifying that space between the bases and making us fight over, well, maybe not every inch of land, but a vast proportion more than we currently do. And again, meaning that vehicles have their kind of their space where infantry can of course capture the points as well. And so these cap points could be out in the field, they could be within bits of cover in between. They don't have to be in buildings. Alright, next guys what I want to talk about is Sundras. Because what I think Sundras should be able to do is select a squad only spawn option. Now this is not something new, this has been suggested by many people many times. But here's the slightly new bit, is that if you set it to squad only, then the interference zone when, within which other Sundras can't deploy disappears. So you can set up as many squad-based Sundras as you like attacking a place. What this means is that you've got more redundancy, because potentially what you can do is you can set up a, a, a general Sundra and a squad Sundra, then if the general Sundra gets knocked out, the squad Sundra could switch and make itself a general spawn. Now this could be done on an automatic way, or it could be done um, purely down to the players. Because what that would do is it would mean that we've got more redundancy in Sundras, which means that fights last longer. And, well, that can only be a good thing. Right, next up is a leadership feature, because feature, it can't be me posting something if I'm not going to talk about leadership and command in some way, shape or form. Anyway, what the idea is, is that you have squad leaders able to call in airstrike and tank support requests. Now back in the day when the mission system was kind of working and heaven forbid we might have seen a phase 2 or phase 3, there were these icons that were hidden away and they were for air support and tank support, uh, sorry, airstrikes and tank support. And they never really saw the light of day but they're sitting there in the game files right now. And if squad leaders could call for these then you could get them like going out to the tank commanders, the people that are in tanks nearby, or the people that are in air cav or liberators and it would direct them to an area where they are needed, allowing arms to be combined and things to be struck and tanks to be destroyed and to be victorious, which would be wonderful, but we still not got anything like that. The mission system phase two, well, it's a phase two, so, well, we all know how that goes. Next up's a slightly controversial one, which I'm not even sure is a good idea, but I'm included on my list because it is related. Now, the thing I'm going to mention here is artillery, because you have a vehicle player with an artillery piece, you've got a uh, an infantry who's spotting targets and they work together, arms combined. Now what of course you can also have is aircraft hunting down and destroying the artillery, tanks flying around and uh, well knocking them out from range. Yeah, you've got yourself a nice interaction there, potentially. Obviously artillery hitting a spawn room is shit, but eh, it's a problem. Um, you could put dome shields for example, but I'll get onto that next. Right, what I mean by dome shields of course is engineers. We've got the little um, like knee high barrier, which I'm very pleased finally got into the game as after I pushed for it for so long. But what we could have is we could have little dome shields. Now they would be like the ones we see on player-made bases, but without the horrendous burning effect and general shit show that 
uh, is that, that is therefore responsible for, but instead it would just be something which blocks f fire from up on high. It might allow you to shoot out, it might not, I do not mind, but as long as it stops shells coming down, airstrikes coming down, and protects those people on the ground, giving infantry that might be out in the field or trying to defend a building on the roof uh, a bit more of a safe haven, making up with some well, uh, potentially bad base design, I do not know. But either way, it gives them some extra cover. Just slap it up, protect yourself from airstrikes from uh, up on high, and potentially artillery, as we just mentioned. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is, is something straight back from Beta, which of course was the Galaxy, and the fact that the damn thing was supposed to be an AMS. Now, before I, I'm not trying, I'm going to try and avoid here going on a rambling discussion about how towers were designed with. Uh, uh, air pads as were the tech plants and things and how that's probably responsible for the numerous iterations we've seen of those bases to try and make the flow work but uh, anyway let's get on with this so what I think is galaxies should get their spawning option back however it should only be for single squads allowing aircraft and the galaxy to take more of a pivotal role in things now I also think it should get its little wing shields back and everything because they look lovely and it should also have some kind of terminal on it allowing organized groups to fly around, stick with their galaxy, and, well, make a difference. Now, because of the things like the micro lattice that I talked about before, or the LLU, you couldn't just bypass the field fight with them anymore. And so that, I, ultimately, I think, is a pretty good idea. And next up, I'm going to talk about tank traps, because tank traps are something which is something that seems very obvious, but we should be able to place our own. Now, you should be able to see an image on the screen of uh, something that I put together myself a while back, but basically it would be an infantry deployable that would stop tanks and harassers and all the rest of the ground vehicles from just being able to plow through infantry. Now we can already use the uh, like AV turrets for that precise purpose, but a tank track would be bigger, it would make more of a difference, and it could perhaps do more damage to vehicles when they strike it. And it would just give infantry a bit more of a kind of playing field out in the, well, out and away from bases. Um, especially now that they've got their reduced range AV. So uh, yeah, that could work. Okay, now the last thing on my list is the Atlas Assault Vehicle, which I mocked up a while back. And simply, it's a, it's a construction type vehicle which you build out in the field and you then use it to advance across, like, really difficult to advance no man's land. What I'm thinking here is kind of the, the approach of the Indar X or somewhere like that, where there's not very much cover and it's going to be a ball lake to get across it. So, yeah, it just allows vehicles and infantry to use it as cover so that they can, well, get to where they need to be and start pushing the lattice lanes. Okay, and I think that's about where I'm going to leave this video today because I thought I'd talk about a number of different features which hopefully should, if they were implemented, make vehicle infantry gameplay interactions well better, more interesting, uh, certainly more, I like to think, certainly more well, combined, for lack of a better word. If you're still watching, thank you very much and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any comments, please leave them on the Reddit thread or on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on Araxis.